Not believing your eyes? You definitely should because the young superstar Carlos Alcaraz has struck again. Imagine winning a tournament without dropping a set. That's what he just did to defend his title in Barcelona. The 19-year-old is no stranger to injuries as his 2022 season was cut short after multiple withdrawals. Firstly, he pulled out of Acapulco and later the Australian Open due to a tear in his abdomen muscle. It's safe to say that Carlos has had his fair share of injuries despite his young age. This can be attributed to his ridiculous intensity during matches, or could it be something else? What do you think? Let's dive deeper into his most recent success of winning the Barcelona Open last week. One of the most talked about tennis players recently, Carlos Alcaraz Garcia, has won yet another ATP title, making it his third title this season. The first seeded Wonderkind started off his Barcelona run in spectacular fashion by beating Nuno Borges 6 3 6 1. The match was an incredible showing of the Spaniard's athleticism and raw power sprinkled with amazing shot selection. Oh, just brilliant. He was able to convert a total of five break points, the first one being as early as the third game. And that's our first break of the match. Which ultimately led to such a convincing result. But he wasn't going to stop there. Carlos' next victim was a fellow countryman, Roberto Batista Agut, that put up a more of a fight. As expected, the match was a grind for both players. Batista Agut is a well-known baseliner that excels on clay courts. Thus, he is guaranteed to put up a great level of resistance and cause problems even to the best of players. Alcarath was able to re-break his opponent's serve and get back into the driver's seat of the match. After a series of intense rallies and brilliant points, the youngster came out on top, winning the match 6-3, 7-5. Were you beginning to wonder if anyone can stop him? Because we certainly were. The next in line of fire of the young Spaniard was another countryman, Alejandro Davidovich for Kina. Carlos started off the match strong by using the first break point, which propelled him further into playing his best tennis. However, Fokina played really great tennis, and the first set was tricky for Carlos to get over the line. This extremely entertaining match came to an end, with Alcaraz winning 7-6, 6-4, and he was to face Daniel Evans in the semi-finals. Needless to say that Carlos had kept his game at an amazing level, resulting in a win over Evans 6-2, 6-2. Barcelona's defending champion beat his opponent in an incredibly convincing fashion, and booked his spot in a second consecutive final in Barcelona. He was to face off with Stefanos Tsitsipas, a rematch from the quarterfinals of Barcelona the previous year, if you remember. The stakes were high for both players, as Tsitsipas had a 0-3 score against Alcaraz at that moment, and Carlos had the pressure of defending the title as he was yet to defend a single title. The two faced off the previous year when the score was 6-4, 5-7, 6-2 in favour of Alcaraz. Despite them playing a total of just four matches, we can already see glimpses of a great future rivalry. Don't you think so too? Alcaraz started off the match incredibly strong by winning his first service game without losing a point. However, it wasn't going to be so easy against a player like Stefanos. The match was an incredible display of tennis excellence from Carlos. He was definitely the one dictating the pace and play style during the entirety of the match. But how on earth is he able to do it against one of the top players on the tour currently? Carlos has superb athletic abilities and is very swift on the court. He used this feature to his advantage to create an illusion for Tsitsipas, that there is no possible way of hitting winners past him. What's equally or even more incredible is that at the age of 19, he's got one of the most powerful forehands in the tennis world. From a young age, he's learned to control and utilize his forehand as his biggest and most potent weapon. Apart from the sheer power of his shots, both forehand and backhand, his ability to open up the court is astonishing. In addition to all this, his drop shots were on fire the entire tournament, especially in the final, as Stefanos very commonly found himself in a defensive position, which enabled Carlos to abuse the drop shot. Oops, we're getting a little sidetracked. Let's get back to the absolute spectacle that this match was. It was an incredibly high-paced match with powerful shots flying from both sides, but but if you thought there'd be nothing else to it, you would have been very wrong. Both players showed a great level of versatility in their game by implementing rhythm changes with drop shots and closing in on the net. Alcaraz, however, was more successful as he was able to drive Stefanos out of the court. Both put up a great show. How were they not in front of such an incredible crowd? In the end, Alcaraz came out on top, beating Tsitsipas 6-3, 6-4, making this the fourth consecutive win against him. Oh, 
Additionally, Carlos was able to prove the skeptics wrong by managing to defend his title for the first time. Both hugged it out at the net and afterward, there was nothing but words of praise from Stefanos. He went on to state that they are not there, but you always have Alcaraz, so referring to Rafa and Novak pulling out of Madrid and Federer being retired. He also added that Carlos presents a large obstacle for him as he possesses an insane amount of enthusiasm for tennis, which is very rare. But what is it that Carlos has that enables him to play like this? Let's get into it. The game of tennis is adamant, and you have to have an incredible level of mental fortitude to reach the top, and Carlos is definitely at that level. When you watch him play, you'd guess that he would perhaps choose his powerful shots as his big weapon, or maybe his fitness, but you'd be wrong. Carlos himself stated that the most fundamental factor of his game is his mental fortitude. I think that as a player, I have grown a lot, and also as a person, Alcaraz said in his pre-tournament press conference in Madrid. Last year, I came here to live these kinds of matches, to be able to gain some experience, to be able to level myself against the best players in the world. Now I consider myself one of them, stated the Spaniard two years ago. I would say my fitness has been important, but definitely the most important part has been the mental game. The pure desire to win in any way is what keeps Alcaraz going. He simply gives 100% on each and every shot, and as said, he doesn't mind missing as long as he enjoys the game. This level of mental toughness is rarely seen in young players, and there are definitely signs of a great champion with the all-roundness of Novak and a warrior mentality like Rafa. But we are yet to see what the future holds for Carlos. Don't you agree? Carlos Alcaraz is an offensive baseliner with incredibly strong shots, as some pro players described the most powerful shots on tour currently. He uses it to overpower his opponents. In addition to sheer power, he's got a great read for the game and is able to move his opponents incredibly well. If that wasn't enough, he's the type of player to chase every single ball. His fitness and pure athleticism are insane. Carlos uses a modern style forehand swing that enables him to generate lots of power as well as topspin on the ball. But really the key to this power is hidden in how well he uses the kinetic chain of motion in all of his shots. Building up power from the legs, transferring it through the hips, body and into the racket, whipping the ball and launching it like a rocket. Due to how amazing his forehand is, his backhand is often overlooked, but it is definitely no slouch. He utilizes the same technique of generating power, but uses it to achieve great consistency on his backhand. In addition to a great baseline, Carlos closes in on the net incredibly quickly and is very proficient with his volleys. But there is one more shot that Carlos adores and has popularized in recent times. Do you know what that shot is? Keep watching to find out. Alcaraz is known for the insane level of intensity that he brings to every match. regardless of the opponent. Incredible footwork paired with a great ability to read the game and court positioning is what makes it look so intense. And of course, his incredibly powerful shots. People wonder how, just how is he able to maintain those levels of performance? It all boils down to his physical readiness and just pure athleticism. Something you might've noticed is that Carlos really loves his drop shots. More specifically, his forehand drop shot. We hardly practice drop shots. That is what we work on least because he pulls them out naturally. Ferrero said during an interview for a Spanish radio, remembering a challenger event in Seville in 2019 when Alcaraz was 16. He was doing too many of them. So when the second set tiebreaker began, I got serious with him and told him not to play even one more drop shot. He promised me he wouldn't. But two points later, he played one and won the point. He turned around and just told me he couldn't help it. At the current state of the game of tennis, where the all court surfaces are much slower than they were before, it's become a norm for players to stand far behind the baseline and just get the ball back into the court. This presents a great advantage for players such as Alcaraz who can utilize their powerful shots to scare away their opponent into a very passive position and then come in with incredible drop shots. Also, it is a massive bonus that his forehand swing is very suitable for disguising the drop shot. Having all of this in mind, the question that is probably on most tennis fans' minds is what does the future hold for Carlos if he keeps playing at this level? Personally, the future looks very bright for him if he's able to remain healthy and injury-free. Guess we'll just have to sit back and enjoy the ride, am I right? Have you got any predictions on the upcoming Madrid Open? Let us know in the comments below. If you want to see more on Carlos Alcaraz's game analysis, check this video out.